In this mini lecture, we're going to talk about the electric potential in a uniform electric field. We're also going to derive some equations and we're gonna work on an example problem that is similar to one of your workbook problems. A uniform electric field is produced by placing a potential difference across two metal plates. You can get this potential difference by making sure that one of your plates has a net positive charge and making sure that your other plate has a net negative charge. Now our potential difference, our change in potential between A and B is a scalar, okay? So it has a magnitude, but no direction, okay? The electric field, remember though, is a vector. So our electric field points away from positive and toward negative. So the electric field between these two parallel plates, if the left plate is positive and the left plate is negative, that electric field vector will point away from the positive plate toward the negative plate. Now there's a potential difference then between the potential over here at plate B and the potential over here at plate A. And we can quantify that potential if we know the electric field and we know the distance that these plates are separated. Now the units of electric field are always Newton per coulomb, but you can also write them as a volt over meter. Um, and that's because with our new equation that we're going to have for the change in potential equals minus the electric field times the distance between two points where we're evaluating that potential difference, then if we solved this for E, E would be the change in potential over a distance. So that would be a volt per meter. So a volt over meter or a Newton per coulomb, they are the same unit. You can massage them to both get them to be the same unit. And we're gonna work through how this equation is derived for the change in potential equals the minus the electric field times the distance. Let's consider a special case for the motion of a particle inside an electric field. Here we have an electric field, the electric field vector is in the positive x direction. And here's my particle. My particle is traveling parallel to that electric field. So in our special case, where the motion of the particle is along the electric field vector, then you can write that electric field as being equal to what I'm gonna call V sub AB over D. D is the distance over which that particle traveled. VAB stands for the potential of the particle at its initial position, point A, minus the position of the particle at its final position, point B. So let's say our particle moved from here, A to B. And at each of these points, it has a different potential. Let's say here it has an electric potential of V sub A. Here it has an electric potential of V sub B. So the electric field in this case would be the potential at point A minus the potential at point B all over this distance over which my particle traveled. To get this equation here, we can start with the equation for work. To move this particle from points A to B, the work done to move the particle is going to equal the electric force of that particle times it's our force through some distance, and we saw this equation the last semester. Now this work, when we're thinking about particles, is also equal to minus the change in electric potential energy. That's the work required to move a particle. And then we've got that equal to our electric force times D, the electric force on that particle. Now also in a previous mini lecture, we saw that we can write the electric field, well, the electric field is the electric force per unit charge. If we're just in the x direction, then my electric force in the x direction will equal to my electric field in the x direction times my charge. So all of this stuff is happening 
in the x direction. Well, this is going to equal my electric field in the x direction times the charge times the distance over which I travel. We also saw that we can write this change in electric potential energy as our change in our electric potential energy is also equal to Q times the potential difference. Okay. So we can rewrite this as minus Q times my potential difference between two points. Now I look at this equation, I see there's a Q on both sides that cancels. Okay. I've got minus this change in potential, that's V final, I'm going to say VB, minus V initial, I'm going to call that VA. So it's the difference between my electric potential at point B, which is my final point, minus my electric potential at point A, which was my initial point, that equals my electric field along the x direction times D. Okay, now this, I can factor that negative sign through here, and then this becomes minus VB plus VA, or maybe I'll write this as VA minus VB, that equals EX times D. So if I solve this for E, my electric field will equal to VA minus VB, which we're going to call V sub AB all over D. So in our special case, where our particle is moving parallel to the electric field, we can say that that electric field is equal to the potential difference between my initial point and my final point all over D. So that's where that equation comes from. This equation is on your equation sheet, and that's for this special case. Let's immediately use this equation here and apply it to a problem. We have a proton, I'm going to label that as P plus to remind me, is released from rest, so my initial velocity is zero meters per second, at a position of x is equal to minus 20 or minus 2 centimeters in a constant electric field with magnitude 1.5 times 10 to the 3 newton per coulomb pointing in the positive x direction. So I've already got my diagram here actually. Here's my electric field pointing in the positive x direction. Find the speed of the proton at a position of 5 centimeters. Well, let's come over here and actually label the diagram that I already drew. Here's our electric field in the positive x direction. I'm going to call right here point A. And over here, point B. Okay. So at point B, we're going to have an electric potential with some quantity V sub B. At point A, we're going to have an electric potential of some quantity V sub A. And at point A, we're going to have a speed, <laughs> V sub A, of zero meters per second, so we're starting from rest. And we're going to say that at this position, we are two centimeters to the left of where we say X is equal to zero. So we'll put X is equal to zero somewhere right here, let's say right along this dotted line. So over here is where my um, particle starts at a position of two centimeters to the left of x is equal to zero. Maybe I'll put that as minus 0 0.02 meters. Okay, just so that we're constant with our units of meters. And then over here at point B, we have to find what the speed is, question mark, and this position is five centimeters to the right of where we say x is equal to zero, or we'll call that 0 0.05 meters. Okay, so this diagram is explaining the problem. Here I've listed my knowns and unknowns in like, kind of like a table form. So to solve this problem, we're trying to get at this speed of my particle at point B at its final position where it reaches five centimeters away from where we say x is equal to zero. 
To solve this problem, since we're looking for the speed here, I'm going to think about conservation of energy. Uh, we've got our initial kinetic energy at point A plus our initial electric potential energy at point A equals our final kinetic energy at point B plus our final electric potential energy at point B. Uh, we started from rest, so our initial kinetic energy is zero. So I've got PE sub A equals KE sub B plus PE sub B. I'm going to move KE sub B over to the left, and I'm going to move PE sub A over to the right. So I'm going to have minus my kinetic energy at point B equals my electric potential energy at point B minus my electric potential energy at point A. So this is the same thing as the change in my potential energy. Our change in my electric potential energy is also equal to our charge times the potential difference. I still somehow need to incorporate my electric field here. We've got delta V, that's our change in potential or potential difference. This is V final minus V initial, VB minus VA. Here we got this equation for the electric field is equal to VA minus VB over D when our particle is moving parallel to the electric field. But we can also write this in terms of delta V by saying that this is equal to can factor out a minus sign from here. Minus negative VA plus VB all over D. If I factor that minus sign back in again, I would have VA minus VB. So I can flip these, or I can change their positions, and I can say that this is equal to minus VB minus VA all over D. This is equal to minus delta V over D. So the electric field is also equal to minus the potential difference all over D. Okay, so I can replace my delta V here equal to Q times negative E D. Okay, and I'll go ahead and write my kinetic energy as minus one half mvb squared. All right, so now I've got this equation right here, and we see that our minus signs cancel on both sides. Um, they cancel each other out. We can multiply or divide both sides by minus one, and we cancel out that minus sign there. Now, uh, we're trying to solve for the speed at point B. So let's go ahead and solve this equation for V sub B. So I've got V B squared equals two Q E D all over M. Now this is also equal to two Q, this D, that's my distance between point B and point A. So I can write this as, oops, 2q times e times xb minus xa all over the mass of my proton. I've got vb squared is equal to 2 times the charge on my proton times the magnitude of the electric field times my position at point B minus my position at point A, all divided by the mass of the proton. So you can get the charge of the proton and the mass of the proton from your equation sheet. When we plug all that in, this is VB squared. So VB squared is equal to all of this stuff. So V squared is equal to the square root of all the stuff. So V, our speed at point B, is 1.42 times 10 
to the five meters per second. So I will let you plug all those quantities in and verify that this is my final answer for the speed of my particle at point B when it moves through this electric field, an electric field that's parallel to its direction of motion.